It is a pleasure to, to be here with you today. Um, as Heather said, my name is Jessica Sarles Dinsick. I am the Associate Dean for International Programs in the School of General Studies. And my role within the School of General Studies really is to maintain the, the quality of the student experience in the joint bachelor's degree program. I work very closely with Heather, um, with my colleagues Grace and Vincy, who you see here with our other college coordinators. Um, and when I find you in the attendee list, I will promote you to panelists as well, um, colleagues. Thank you for your patience. Um, and really my goal every day in my job is to make sure that the joint bachelor's degree program is the excellent experience that we uh, will tell you it is today. Um, normally, I am at this time of year actually physically in Hong Kong um, presenting this information session in person with our Vice Dean Curtis Rogers. Unfortunately, he was not able to join us this evening, um, but I will do my best to um, really channel his spirit and, and uh, convey everything he would normally convey as well. Um, the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, before I start the, the presentation, the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program I've, I've had the pleasure of working on from the very beginning for about 10 years now. We're actually coming up on the 10th anniversary of the program. Um, and it's a program that we are incredibly proud of. Uh, some of the, the best students in the School of General Studies and at Columbia in general are part of this program. Uh, in fact, our, our salutatorian of the class of 2021 uh, was a student from the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, in, program uh, Timang Shi, uh, who was just graduated, I believe, as a mathematics major, if I am not mistaken. I believe that that is true, um, last May. And it's a program that really incorporates the best of two fantastic universities, allowing students to really create an international element and get depth of experience, breadth of experience over the course of a particular academic program of study in four years. It's something that from the School of General Studies, I have the pleasure of working on all of our international dual degree programs. And the, the Joint Bachelor's degree, degree Program really attracts a very special kind of student, uh, the kind of student who is looking for academic excellence. Absolutely, you already, been in a very ex excellent academic environment during years one and two at City U, but also students who are looking for maybe a little bit of an adventure as part of their undergraduate experience. Students who have um, a sense of wanting to not just have a traditional study abroad program, but something that goes deeper than that, something that, that goes more broad than that. Um, and we're thrilled to be able to partner with our colleagues at the City University of Hong Kong to offer a program like this. Um, I will start my, my presentation now. As Heather mentioned, we do have uh, current students as well. So I wanna make sure that we're reserving, honestly, the majority of the time for our prospective students to the program to ask questions and to be part of the conversation. Please absolutely feel free to use the Q&A function um, once we get into the Q&A section, because we want to make sure that you're part of this conversation. And we know that speaking with the college coordinators and uh, speaking with our current students really is the best way to get the information that you're that you're looking for. Um, but I'll preface all of that with a brief presentation on the program overall, and I'll share my screen now. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Great. Okay, I believe you should be able to see my screen now. Um, so really the, the gist, the, the, the big idea that's encompassed in the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program is what you see on the screen in front of you. Two colleges, two degrees, four years. Um, if you take nothing else away from this presentation, that's really the thing to, to remember. Um, the City University of Hong Kong and, and Columbia University have partnered in order to allow students to earn two bachelor's degrees over the course of four years in a particular academic course of study. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, the joint bachelor's degree program is just about 10 years old, but it actually joins a history of, an, of dual degree programs that go back almost 70 years at this point. Our first joint degree program was founded in 1954 within the School of General Studies, um, and that was with the Jewish Theological Seminary in New York City. Uh, the big difference between the Jewish Theological Seminary joint degree program and the City U joint degree program is that the Jewish Theological Seminary is slightly closer uh, in terms of distance. The JTS campus is three, three blocks away from the Columbia campus, um, rather than 
a, a continent away. Um, but the, the, the structure of the program is very similar, where students really are earning two degrees over the course of four years, enrolled at two different universities at the same time. In 2010, we launched, launched our first international dual BA program with Sciences Po in France. And after that, um, we were approached by a colleague who uh, used to work at Columbia and was then based at City U, um, Dr. David Chang, who said, I've been following the progress of this dual bachelor's program with Sciences Po. We'd like to do something similar at City U. And really in investigating the way that the City U curriculum is structured and especially the um, philosophical and pedagogical overlap between the gateway education requirements and the Columbia core curriculum, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, we realized that this is a, a program that was very easy and very, very natural to fit together between our two universities. Um, so as I mentioned a moment ago, students do spend two years at City University of Hong Kong. So all of you who are current students at City U, this is something that you're already engaged with. Those of you who might be prospective students, um, you would spend your first two years at City U and then your years three and four at GS, the School of General Studies at Columbia University. And at the end of the experience, you graduate with two bachelor's degrees. Now the Columbia degree requirements are also very similar to the City U degree requirements. And I'll go into more detail about this in a couple of slides, but very briefly, uh, in order to earn a bachelor's degree at Columbia University, whether it's through the joint degree program or whether it's just, um, whether it's through uh, a single degree process, students have to earn a minimum of 124 credits uh, over the course of typically four years. Um, 60 of those credits tend to come from our core curriculum requirements and the core curriculum I'll go into more detail uh, in a few minutes, but it's very similar to the gateway education requirements at City U. 30 credits come, 30 credits or so come from the academic major and 25 credits or so come from electives or free classes that students really can choose to either go into more detail in a, on a personal interest or potentially take on a minor or fulfill sometimes uh, with their electives fulfill city U degree requirements over the course of years three and four. But the, the important thing to know are those 124 credits. That's really the number that you have to get to um, within your studies at Columbia in order to be eligible to graduate. Now, there are pre-approved majors at City U that are part of the joint bachelor's degree program. Um, and you can see them listed here, all of the different majors at City U and how they map specifically two different majors at Columbia University. Um, and what that means is that whatever you're studying in years one and two at City U will then carry forward. That's, that's something that you'll study along the same lines in years three and four at Columbia. So if, for example, you are a computer science major at City U, you would be a computer science major or possibly a computer science math major during your time at Columbia. Um, if you are a linguistics major, uh, linguistics and language applications at City U, you would be a linguistics major at Columbia. Um, you can see all of the kind of overlaps and mappings here. And that's something that um, Heather and I and, and my, colleague, my colleagues in all of the different colleges, we work very closely on, I would say probably every day. This is something that we're in constant conversation about to make sure really that the classes that you're taking at City U map well and align well to what you would take at Columbia and to make sure that the classes you're taking at Columbia then are able to apply back towards your degree requirements at City U as well. Um, we, are, we are in constant co communication with one another, which is for me, one of the best parts of my job. And so a lot of questions, a lot of times when we get to this point in the presentation, students come to the, the very natural question, which is how? How do you fit four years worth of classes from each university into four, only four years over the course of two universities? And the way we do that is by, on the Columbia side, looking at the classes you've taken in years one and two at City U and applying them forward towards that 124 credit minimum for your studies at, at, at Columbia. And so we actually take just a block of 60 credits from years one and two at City U and 
apply them towards that 124 credit minimum. And then you would work with your academic advisor to make sure that the classes you've taken at CityU will apply also towards your major requirements and those core curriculum requirements that I mentioned a moment ago. And so it's something that um, if any of you have, have kind of seen the mappings that, that exist for the joint bachelor's degree program, again, we work very closely on this. It's sometimes a little bit, uh, a little bit awkward to describe in the abstract, but something that actually in practice works very well and it's something we've done for going on 10 years now. Um, the important thing to know is that we don't expect you to take more than a normal number of classes in a given semester. You're not expected to fit four years worth of classes into two years, either at CityU or at Columbia. We are really kind of constantly working together to make sure that it is a seamless and really natural progression and that students are able to really achieve academically the, the goals that they set for themselves. And then as you start to think about what happens before you get to campus from now until if you're thinking about applying for fall of 2022, what happens from now until then? Um, we'll go through the application timeline in just a moment, but as soon as a student is offered admission to the joint bachelor's degree program, you're assigned a Columbia academic advisor uh, who will meet with you actually before you even leave Hong Kong. Um, they'll have an advising session. We will have pr uh, pre-departure orientations. We'll have post-arrival orientations for students um, as you prepare to take classes in New York. Uh, you get priority class registration. So as soon as you're offered admission to the Joint Bachelor's Degree, degree Program, you are already considered to have third year standing, which means that you get uh, kind of you get to, to register ahead of uh, students who maybe don't have as many credits or, or are first year or second year students at Columbia so that you can be sure that you'll be able to, to get into the classes that you need for years three and four. We also have an excellent academic resource center for students who might want tutoring in a subject if there's something that you want a little bit of extra support for, or on the other side of things, if you are really doing well in a class and you want to offer tutoring, um, you can actually volunteer through the academic resource center. And then we have a lot of opportunities to connect with other students, um, seniors in the program and other students within our joint degree programs. Um, we actually have a mixer coming up in two weeks with all of our international dual degree programs for all of the students here on campus. Um, it's smaller than it would normally be because of kind of public safety uh, regulations and, and protocols, but we're just very excited to be able to really offer an opportunity for students to connect one another, with one another now that we're all back on campus. And so another thing that's important to know about Columbia, which is unique for a lot of American universities, is that there are actually four different undergraduate colleges within the university. And you can see here in the slide, it's the same degree, you're earning the same degree within the same classroom as other students, but it's different missions. And that's really what sets each individual college apart from one another. Um, Columbia College is the liberal arts college that most students think of when they think about applying to Columbia University. And that's the school that's intended for students who are coming straight out of high school, going through all four years in the same physical location and earning one degree at the end of that experience, a very traditional college experience. Um, the Fu Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Science is very similar, except instead of liberal arts, it's uh, for students who are following studies in, as you may, uh, as you may guess, engineering and applied sciences. Um, and that tends to be for students who are following that traditional academic path. Um, Barnard College is our women's affiliate college, which is actually just across the street from the main Columbia University campus. Um, and they offer a traditional liberal arts experience specifically for women. And then we have the School of General Studies uh, in which the Joint Bachelor's Degree pro Program is embedded. And the School of General Studies is the school whose mission serves non-traditional students or students who are following a non-traditional path. And by virtue of the fact that you would be studying in two different universities in two different countries over the course of four years, uh, the university kind of senior administration, our president's office and our provost's office decided that that was a pretty non-traditional choice. Um, and we tend to agree. And I personally feel very lucky that, that they made that decision because I love working on these programs. And so within the School of General Studies, part of our mission is to offer these cutting edge um, state-of-the-art dual degree programs with partners all around the world. Uh, and that's really how 
joint bachelor's degree, degree program students and non-traditional students in general fit into the overall Columbia University structure. So a few moments ago, I mentioned the core curriculum and the core really is designed to ensure that students who undergo their studies at Columbia and then engage with the, the Columbia academic experience are able to walk off campus at the end of four years with expertise and skills in critical reasoning and analysis and writing and really are able to go out into the world and to be ambassadors of intellectual thought and to be public intellectuals. And whether that's on a global stage, whether that's on a local stage, what we really care about within the, the, the ethos and the philosophy of the core curriculum is that students are exposed to a number of different academic topics, a number of different patterns of thought and ways of thinking and ways of thinking about the world so that it's not just that you get deep expertise in your academic major, of course you will, but you'll also have a breadth of experience that spans a number of different academic areas. And so students in the joint bachelor's degree, degree program also engage with the Columbia Corps uh, in university writing, in literature, in music and art humanities. A number of the classes that you take at CityU actually will fulfill core curriculum requirements. And it's one of the reasons that the program can work so well. The, the gateway education requirements at CityU really align very nicely with the Columbia core curriculum. And what we tend to find is students in the joint bachelor's degree program usually arrive on campus at Columbia with about half of their core curriculum requirements already fulfilled based on classes that they've taken at CityU. And so again, it's not that you're trying to play catch up and fit all of these different core curriculum areas into two years along with your major, but really that the two programs and the two, the two academic structures align with one another very, very well. And so I wanna talk a little bit about student life because it's a really important part of the Columbia experience. Um, it's one thing to engage in the classroom experience and it's one thing to take classes, but of course you can do all of that. You can read as many books as you want to gain just academic experience. And the, the beauty of being here is being part of New York City and being part of campus life. Um, so the campus has about 31,000 students total, uh, about 10,000 undergraduates. Of those 10,000 undergraduates, about 2,800 are part of the School of General Studies. Of those 2,800, about 250-ish are in our international and joint degree programs. Of those 250 students, about 35 are in the joint bachelor's degree program at this moment. And so you can see, even though there is a, a really large campus community, you also have kind of concentric circles of community as well that you can choose to engage in. When you arrive on campus, you can just be part of a friend group that includes only students from the joint bachelor's degree program, though we do hope you meet other people on campus outside of that group. Um, you can engage just with our international dual degree programs overall, and we have three other programs that, uh, that fit that description. Or you can engage with the entire GS student community and the entire undergraduate community. And what we find is that students in the joint bachelor's degree program really kind of uh, swim a little bit through all of those different community groups, depending on the situation and depending on the moment. Um, we also have over 500 clubs and student organizations, uh, which means that if there is a club that you're part of or an organization or association at CityU, chances are we have something very similar here on the Columbia campus so that you can maintain uh, a connection to uh, extracurricular life and uh, all of those other enriching aspects of a uh, Columbia experience that go along with your academic experience. We are also part of the uh, NCAA Division I Athletics, otherwise known as the Ivy League. That is actually how the Ivy League gets its name. Um, I'm actually coming to you today from homecoming weekend uh, where the biggest football game of the year is played. Um, tomorrow, the Columbia Lions will play, um, or I guess later today in, uh, in Hong Kong, the Columbia Lions will, pay, will play uh, Penn, uh, the University of Pennsylvania. So, we're really looking forward to that. It's a very exciting thing. It's one of the first uh, alumni events we've actually had on campus in two years. So we are very excited about that. And then of course, there are all of the cultural offerings 
within New York City, all of the, the different offerings that, that exist. Uh, the campus is right on Broadway, uh, right on the number one train. So you can very easily get on the number one subway train and go to Lincoln Center, go to a Broadway show, go to jazz clubs, um, access any of the outdoor spaces that we have in New York City, Central Park or the High Line, which is one of my favorite places to go in New York City, which is an elevated train track that's been turned into a park. Um, and it's just a really wonderful way to kind of see the city through new eyes. Uh, and then of course, the other question that students and, and parents often have is where will I live? And students in the joint bachelor's degree program are guaranteed access to Columbia campus housing in years three and four. Um, those tend to be uh, student apartments right around the campus area. So um, within two or three blocks of the campus and those are maintained and uh, kind of administered by Columbia University our, our Columbia residential housing office. And then after graduation, there are so many opportunities for students in the joint bachelor's degree program. You have access to the Center for Career Education, which offers assistance with on and off campus employment, with career planning, especially if you're looking to maybe um, brush up an American style resume or uh, a CV, because there are they are two different kind of formats. The Career Center is amazing for that kind of resume coaching and career planning. Um, you have access to internship opportunities in New York, around the United States, um, and job fairs and on-campus recruitment that happen all through the year. Um, we also have kind of a one of the kind for um, for an American university, an amazing fellowships and graduate school advising program. And our fellowships and graduate school advising deans are accessible to you uh, both while you're enrolled at Columbia, as well as after graduation, if you're thinking about applying for specific fellowships or graduate schools, that's, an, that's a, an option that you have available to you for the rest of your life, along with the Center for Career Education and our alumni services. And then once you've graduated, you are part of two global net alumni networks with people around the world with networks who are full of people who are really invested in helping you succeed and now that we are 10 years into the joint bachelor's degree program not only are there people who are part of the columbia alumni network or part of the city u alumni network around the world but you also have joint program alumni who want to help the students who are coming after them and want to give back to this experience as well which is really really wonderful So I'll, I'll pause there for just a moment. Um, and now we can talk a little bit about the admissions process. Oh, pardon me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about admissions uh, and that'll take a couple of minutes and then we'll actually start the Q&A because again, I wanna make sure that we're leaving plenty of time for that because that's the, the very exciting part. Um, so the important details about the admissions process. In order to be eligible, for the joint bachelor's degree program, you have to be enrolled in a four-year degree program in an eligible major at CityU. And so going back to those majors we, we talked about a few minutes ago, um, you have to be in one of those majors in the four-year degree uh, structure at CityU. In years one and two, you have to complete at least 60 credits at CityU with a minimum 3.3 GPA, though the average is slightly higher than that. And I will also include a caveat here that the minimum GPA for your individual college may also be slightly higher. So please pay special attention to any communications that you get from your college coordinators, because this is the minimum GPA just for the program in general. Um, but your college may have a slightly higher GPA, just to, to be aware of that. Um, we also do require students to submit an English proficiency exam as part of the application process. Um, and then we also administer our own Columbia specific essay exam called the ALP essay exam, the American language program exam as part of the application process. And so over the next few weeks and, and couple of months, you will actually fill out a pre-application through your college at CityU. Um, and then you'll go through interviews both on the CityU side and with myself and our colleagues at Columbia as part of this process. Um, the internal application form on the CityU side will be sent to second year students in all of the eligible majors that we discussed earlier. And then the Columbia application will be online for eligible students who go through the pre-application process um, on the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program website uh, later on starting in November. Um, and so when we are looking at applications, 
there are a number of things that we ask you to submit, and I'm talking specifically about the Columbia side of the application process right now. Uh, we ask you to submit your high school or secondary school records, um, because at the moment you'll only have a full one full year completed of studies at CityU, so we'll only be able to see that one year, that first year of your academic records at CityU. So we also need to see your high school or secondary school records alongside your CityU uh, transcripts. If you've attended another college or university, we'll ask you to submit those transcripts as well. And any documents that are not in English, we'll also ask you to send a translation. We require one letter of recommendation from a CityU professor. Um, we don't need any more than that one letter of recommendation. From time to time, other students have asked to submit two letters, and we can accept up to two letters, but no more than two. We want to make sure that um, we're not giving anyone an unfair advantage or giving anyone kind of preferential treatment. So one academic letter of recommendation is absolutely all you need. Um, and then really one of the most important parts of the application process is the one in which we ask you to tell us about yourself, your autobiographical essay. And this is such an important part of the application. It's a very American kind of part of the application as well. And we ask you to tell us a little bit about your academic experiences. We ask you to tell us about why you chose CityU for your undergraduate studies and why you're choosing to apply also now to the joint bachelor's degree program. Really, there are two kind of sister questions that we ask students to think about when writing their, their personal essay or their autobiographical essay. The first is, why is this program right for you? And the second is, why are you right for this program? And as you think about applying to the joint bachelor's degree program, those are two really good questions to kind of um, to think on, to meditate on a little bit, and to really consider as you think about and imagine yourself into the next two years um, at Columbia in years three and four. And so to get more specific about the application timeline um, in mid-October, about now, I guess today is the, the middle of October, um, you'll get within the next few weeks, you'll receive the internal application for students who are in year two at CityU. Um, in those eligible majors, you'll receive an invitation to submit the internal application. Uh, the, or the internal application will be due to your individual academic departments in early November. Um, and then in mid-November, there will be an internal screening of applications and CityU interviews. That's also when our, um, our application will open and you'll receive your selection decision. And then uh, by January 15th, that's the deadline for the Columbia side of the application process. And you'll receive a lot of communications about this over the next couple of months. So this is not the, the last time you'll hear any of this information. Um, but January 15th is the Columbia application deadline. And then we read all of those applications. We conduct interviews over the course of, uh, of a, a couple of months. And then we re release your admissions decisions by mid-March. Um, and so, of course, alongside the admissions process is the financial aid process. And that's something that, of course, is very important for students in the program. It's important to know what a, a typical Columbia, um, a Columbia uh, education costs. And it's important to know, as you plan ahead, what that looks like and, and really what that experience will be. And so when you're in years three and four, joint degree program students pay tuition to the School of General Studies. And that is um, just under $2,000 per credit for approximately 32 credits per year. And we do have, if you go to the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program website, we do have a breakdown of what a, a typical year cost looks like. Now, that's a big number. Uh, for one year of, of studies, I believe tuition this year is somewhere just under $60,000 US. And that's, that's a big number. And I understand that that is a big number. We do also offer scholarships um, and, and student aid. And that's something that's very important to remember as well. And so as you complete the application process for admission, we also ask you to complete something called the CSS profile online as part of the scholarship application decision. Because what we feel very strongly about is making sure that we can, as soon as you're offered admission, we can also turn around and offer you a scholarship package as well if you're interested in applying for scholarship aid. Uh, when we look at applications, we actually don't take into account 
what a student's financial situation is. That's not something that we look at when we are assessing whether or not we think a student is a good fit for the joint bachelor's degree program. Um, it's something that in kind of the admissions world we call need blind. Um, and so what we're looking at when we read an application for admission is, are you a good fit for the program? Is this program academically right for you? Is it personally right for you? And then from there, once an admissions decision is made, then we work to kind of help you figure out the, the financial aspects of the program. On the CityU side, there are also scholarships available. Um, there is a lot of information on the CityU uh, Joint Bachelor's Degree Program website, and I'll make sure to, to put that uh, in the chat before the end of the evening tonight. And we also do have it listed at the end of this PowerPoint presentation. Um, but just know, really, the important thing to know here is that you do have access to funding and you do have access to financial support, both from the Columbia side of the program and the CityU side of the program. And so I promised to keep this part of things quick because I want to make sure we can get to the Q&A session. Um, this is all of the contact information on the city U side for at students who have questions or concerns. You can see here listed out for all of the, the different colleges who your main contact would be. Um, if you haven't been in touch with your college coordinator yet and you're interested in, um, in applying to the program, please absolutely be in touch. They are amazing resources our, our colleagues in the in the different colleges all of our college coordinator colleagues we are on the Columbia side so lucky to have you and we appreciate all of the work you do so much um, and so please absolutely be in touch with your college coordinator colleagues and then if you have questions about the program more broadly this is the joint email address that both Heather and I receive as well as colleagues that we have uh, in our offices um, if you write an email to that to that email address, we will both receive it. One of us will respond to you. Um, and our website is listed there as well. And you can also follow us on some social media if you're interested. Um, so I know that we have definitely some questions and some, uh, some time to uh, jump into the Q&A. So I will go ahead and if it's okay, Heather, I will uh, stop the PowerPoint now, um, and I will turn it back over to you. Sure, Jessica. And I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that I promote the rest of our colleagues uh, to panelists as well. Mm -hmm. So I think um, after Jessica's presentation, we can actually uh, let uh, college coordinators speak to each um, to, to our attendees here today. So, uh, you know, you will put a face to the name that you come across on emails. And if you have any questions, please, please feel free to approach your college coordinator uh, for help and, and also seek advice. So um, now we can invite, oh, maybe we'll just give Jessica a minute. <laughs> Okay, so today we have the college coordinators of our College of Business, uh, College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, um, uh, College of Science and also College of Engineering. So maybe we can start with the College of Business, um, Ms. Ada Chen. Ada, you, uh, you need to turn on the microphone. Sorry, hi everyone. Uh, good to see you all. I'm Ada Chen uh, from the College of Business. So I'm responsible for handling the uh, the program, the joint degree programs for all uh, C business majors, including uh, business economics, global business, uh, computational finance, financial uh, technology, as well as the business analysis. So for students, if you have uh, majoring in these uh, business majors, and if you have any questions about this program, you can also approach me. Thank you. Thank you, Ada. So we also have the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you. So good morning, students and colleagues. Um, and hello to Jessica again. You all hear me, right? Okay. Uh, glad to see you all. And, um, and uh, to class students here in particular, I would like to share some advice, um, particularly on three things, okay? Now, number one, 
uh, year two students of uh, our eligible majors, uh, you will receive email from your home department about the internal application process uh, sometime early next week. So uh, manage your time well and don't miss deadlines. Um, now, um, my personal advice is that before you make up your mind to apply, uh, please find some time to have a deep reflection on, on who you are, on uh, what you're you are passionate about on your goals and very importantly on why you think you are a good fit to this John Bachelor's degree program. Now, this is a very important question to reflect on. Now, number two, um, the class students, you will go through firstly the screening of your home department, and then your application will be reviewed by your major leader, and you will be you, you may be interviewed by your department faculty too. Now, after receiving the department's recommendations, our college. Um, we also have uh, our own selection process, and you may be required to attend an interview organized by the college. Number three, uh, please do your very best to upkeep your academic performance uh, throughout the entire academic year. Uh, because if we notice uh, that there is a decline in your GPA or, or your academic result at any point of time during the application, the college might consider not supporting to proceed your application any further. So, be, uh, so please be uh, advised to uh, uh, upkeep your uh, academic performance, okay? Now, uh, well, uh, uh, just uh, last piece uh, of advice uh, uh, on uh, the news section of our college website, the class website, we have some web stories on past graduates in this John program. Um, they are in different majors and they share their learning experience at Columbia. So you are welcome to take a look. I hope you find this uh, helpful. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, call it, uh, to contact us at the college office. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. And then we also have the College of Engineering here. So uh, we have Dr. Howard Learn and also Ms. Vinci Chen. Yeah, we'll see, maybe. Uh, yes, thank you. So I am Vincy of the College of Engineering. So uh, the CS student, if you have any questions about the program, you can contact me or Dr. Howard Learn for further um, advice. So maybe Dr. Howard Learn, you can say a few words to CS students. Hello, I'm Howard. So uh, basically, I would like to point out a few things. So first, uh, please note that uh, for CS students joining this program, so you will be spending five years, not four years for this program, because we have this signature IT professional placement for your year three. So we want to keep that. So three years at CityU and two years at uh, Columbia U. So that's the first point. Second point is if you really want to join this program, uh, you need to be well prepared because uh, we you, you need to show that you understand. Okay, so what are the unique feature for this joint degree program? And you need to be able to tell us why we want to uh, select you in this program because we only recommend our best students. Okay, thank you. Okay, and lastly, we also have Ms. Janice Lam for the College of Science. Okay, morning, uh, students and colleagues. So uh, for College of Science, the eligible majors include uh, students from physics and also computing mathematics. So uh, we, the college office will also be sending out the application forms uh, early next week. So uh, year two eligible students will receive our email and make sure you apply on time. And if you want to um, discuss on your course plan how to um, you know, make up your, uh, some courses before you uh, go to Columbia, then uh, you can talk to, for uh, MA students, you should talk to Dr. Dai Dan, who's the major leader of this course. And for physics students, you can discuss with Dr. Condon Lau. So they will be able to give you advice on your course plan. And uh, anything else, you are welcome to come to me. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, and so after the college coordinators uh, greetings to all of the, the attendees here today, we actually, as I have mentioned in the beginning, we also have some current students who are uh, on the joint bachelor's degree program. So uh, we would also like to invite them to uh, share their firsthand experience and also, you know, um, let, tell you how, uh, what kind of journey they have been through. So we would also like, in, uh, like to invite them as panelists and speak to all of you. 
Wonderful. And I'll just make a note that um, if I've invited you to be a panelist and I, I see um, Frank and Sophia um, and Sage, um, I'll invite you one more time because we'd love to get you in as part of the, the conversation here as well. And hello, Andrew and Joey. And while we're maybe while we're waiting on everyone else, um, Heather, do we want to maybe start with with Andrew or Joey talking about their experience in the program so far? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, Joey told me that he wants to go last. How about okay. uh, starting with Andrew, if Andrew doesn't mind? Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, more than happy to. Um, yeah. So my current experience with the program is uh, New York is amazing um, for one. It's very amazing to just come here and meet people, um, strangers anywhere, right? You could just sit down, you know, to ask them how their day. And back in Asia, I'm asking people how their day is. They'll reply with a pleasantry, yes, it's good. But here asking how, someone how their day is, um, you can just, you know, build a whole friendship out of that, you know, start something very beautiful from that. Um, that's one. And I think um, beyond that, Colombia is very challenging um, when it comes to academics. Um, it's Friday night and I'm here in a library trying to finish my assignments. So all in all, I think it's it's very it's very interesting as well beyond that. Uh, everything I'm learning here, my classmates, they're also passionate about their subject. Um, and I don't want to go on the comparative of like, oh, what Columbia is like, what CU is like when it comes to academics. But all in all, I think it's a very different experience. Um, but yeah, all in all, I'm loving it. I think it's a very good experience. And yeah, moving on to other people. Okay, so thank you so much, Andrew. And uh, Andrew will also stay behind here. So if you have any questions about uh, anything, uh, our student uh, ambassadors will be here to answer you. Uh, so for the next one, how about Sophia? Hey, sure. Um, so hi, I'm Sophia. I am a year four student um, majoring in psychology. So. Uh, so this is my second year in this program, but it's my first year being in New York and studying in person because uh, the last year I was doing it remotely. Um, and I guess for me, I could like talk a little bit about my academic experience. Um, to me, I think that uh, one thing that <laughs> one thing that sticks out to me weirdly was that the length of the lectures are way shorter because like instead of having one um one free hour lecture per week you're getting like two uh lectures per week and each is like um one hour and 15 minutes uh so you actually end up with like uh you know like less time on lecture but you've got more readings so uh for me i'll say like a general advice for now is definitely to be on top of your readings, um, especially if you study psychology, because you're going to get a lot of those. Depending on how many uh, humanities related course you take, you you may be expected to have like uh, maybe 60 to 100 pages of reading like per week um, per course. So that was that was me. Thank you so much, Sophia. And um, for the um, next, maybe we can have Frank. So, hey guys, good morning or good evening. So this is Frank. Uh, I'm currently a senior <laughs> at Columbia. So actually like I joined Columbia in 2019. So I stayed there also during the pandemic. So it's pretty a long time. Uh, I was currently majoring in econ math and back in CDU, I majored in uh, business economics and their, and their cardio business. So I also have some of my friends with me today. So let me see if I can turn. So say hi to the videos. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so as you can, oh, sorry, I'm muted. So as you can see, these friends, we are also coming from the whole program. So some of them majoring in mathematics, some of them majoring in computer, computational finance, some of them majoring in mathematics, economics. So yeah, we are currently back in New York. So it's great you know, to see all my friends coming here. And 
yeah, I'm happy to talk more about the application process. And also if you are interested in like the life in New York, like just shoot me any question and we are happy to answer you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Frank, I actually have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. I see, I know where you are and I can, I know where you are on campus, but can you, can you tell people kind of where you're seated and, and where you and Sage and everyone else are, are right now on the Columbia campus? Yeah, sure. So we are currently actually sitting on the lawn in front of the Butler Library. So if you can see on the back. Yeah, that's, that's our, the largest library called the Butler Library. It is 24 seven opening. So we have a lot of, you know, like students, you know, working on their homework, you know, using their phones or <laughs> do a lot of stuff at the library. So it, it, I would say like one of the maybe moments I can share is like, I was pretty impressed with, you know, how many like Colombians or like Columbia students, they are working hard at the library, no matter during the weekdays or during like the weekends. So I would say that is also one of the like most like enjoyable moments when you see a lot of your peers are working hard, you know, working on their projects, working on their homework and also working on their professional development stuff. So yeah, I feel really like grateful, you know, to join this program and also, you know, staying here, you know, meet some of my friends here. Yep. And Andrew, Thank did you, you? Oh, I'm sorry, Heather. Oh, I didn't mean sorry, to sorry. You. sorry. No, no, no. Jessica, please go ahead. I was going to say, Andrew, are you currently in the Butler Library? Is that where you said you were a couple minutes ago? Or are you in a different library on campus? I'm in a different library. Uh, the okay. brilliant thing about Columbia is that's what, 26 <laughs> libraries? You get to a library hop every day. So fun. <laughs> Great. So thank you so much, Frank. And um, I can see uh, Sage right next to you. So maybe we pass the time to Sage. Yeah, sure. So hi, everyone. Thanks for sharing, Frank. Thanks for sharing, everyone. I'm Sage. I'm a 2018 cohort and CDU, and I joined Columbia in 2020. And I took a leave of absence due to COVID, and now I'm finally back to campus, taking online, uh, taking in-person classes. I'm super excited to be here, and feel free to ask me any questions with regards to the application process or the life at Columbia or finding an internship or a job at Columbia. I'm happy to share. And currently, I'm sitting with Frank and other with other of my friends. I'm super nice to be here. Very nice, yeah. And finally, we also have Joey. So Hi, may everyone. I invite Joey? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Joey. I'm a senior student. And the, the truth is I'm a fifth year student because I extended the uh, graduation process for one year. And uh, I'm uh, in cohort 2017 in City U. And I was admitted by Columbia in 2019. So my previous major in CDU was computational finance and my current major is computer science with a concentration in linguistics. And uh, it is really nice to receive the invitation and meet everyone here. So um, Heather, can I show the thing that's really exciting to everyone by sharing the screen? Yes, of course, please okay. go ahead. Thank you so much. So during the past two years, me and my fellow students uh, from cohort 2017 has made several resources, including booklets uh, and the videos for our junior students to help them finish the application process and know more about this program. So as a CS student, I try to build up a website, which includes everything. And uh, I call it at City U Columbia Resources. So let's give it a show up now. Um, Okay, can everyone see me? Okay, so this is the website called CDU Columbia Resources. Not so creative when creating the names, I just want to make it easy to uh, remember, so to memorize. And um, so in this website here, uh, you can see that, uh, so the cover here is Butler Library. I think Frank and Sage will sit here. <laughs> and anyway, I, I want to be with them. It's just my hardware, uh, <laughs> hardware issue, those internet. <laughs> and uh, here's the introduction. You can see buildings of Columbia, Butler Library and City U, AC1. That's, uh, yeah. Oh, emphasis on the campus. <laughs> and uh, here is the thing we called encyclopedia. It is finished in 2019 and uh, it's written in two volumes. The first volume is for the application 
uh, before admission. And the second one is after you get your admission, what should you expect and what should you do? And uh, currently we are still editing the English version of it. Uh, it is available in both simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese. And uh, yeah, so the, the profile picture here is in traditional Chinese. Let's give it a quick shot. So there's the timeline of preparing for the application. And uh, there's some comments from every one of us and uh, there's some you know, useful graphs and uh, uh, recommendations and uh, everything that we think are including also the useful sites here. Also, there's the volume for Columbia and uh, you can download here by access, uh, by choosing your languages you prefer. And uh, now it is the video section. So uh, thank, thanks to um, GEO and CDU, uh, every April, there is a pre-departure orientation session for the, every new admitted student. And uh, for the past two years, I and other fellow students have prepared two videos for each year. And uh, it's just the Q&A Q videos you would expect. And uh, here's a quick shot of all those questions. I think most of them are really frequently asked and uh, I hope it will be useful and serve as a reference. And uh, if you, if you think those videos are too long, don't worry. There are some two to three minute videos for you to quickly answer your questions. And maybe a quick tour on Columbia campus. That's really nice during the springtime. And also here's the official website here. And also if you want to, can, if you want to contact me, feel free to do so. And uh, that's it. The, the website is cityucolumbia.com. So I, I guess that's pretty much it. And I'm um, also, Feel free to ask me about the, uh, the life in New York City and the life in Colombia. Really busy time for me this semester, but I'm always happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joey. And it's really kind and nice of you to create this kind of resources and share with all the prospective students. I think, uh, you know, for those, especially for those who have never been to New York City, the, your, the videos and also all the information that you put up there will be very useful for them. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you. I just want to help everyone to have an idea of what the program is and you by using moving pictures and uh, mm -hmm. uh, ex explanations from us previous students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, much appreciated. And so uh, after um, Jessica's presentation, college coordinators, uh, 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 co college coordinators greetings and also our current students sharing, uh, let's um, open the floor for questions. So yeah, Jessica. Yeah, absolutely. And um, thank you, everyone, uh, Andrew, Sage, Sophia, Joey, Frank, thank you so much for taking time out of your Friday night um, to, to be part of this session. I know there are many other things that you could be doing with your time. I know, Andrew, you're in the library. Um, so thank you all for, for joining us. It's really good to see all of you and to have you back on campus. It's really nice. Um, so yeah, absolutely. If you have questions about really any aspect of the program for anyone you see on the screen here, um, please feel free to, and, uh, to um, ask them in the Q&A function. Um, that's probably the better place to, to get them so that we make sure that we don't miss them. Um, we do have a couple of questions here already. Um, so maybe we'll start with the first one. And I think Heather, you had been starting to kind of address yes. that as well about um, studying at CityU with an entrance scholarship that covers tuition fees. And the question is, if the student were to go to Columbia through the joint bachelor's degree program, would the entrance scholarship cover tuition fees at Columbia? Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, um, for city university entrance scholarships, there are three different categories. So um, normally, our non-local students receive either um, a half tuition scholarship, half to uh, a full tuition scholarship, or a top scholarship. So uh, with the, 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 such uh, entrance scholarships will be carried forward to Columbia University once you move to New York City in your third year. Um, and the amount will be exactly the same. So for example, if you get a, a top scholarship, which is 23,000 US dollars, um, 23,000 US dollars will be carried forward and you will receive the same amount per year. Um, however, what I would like to highlight is that uh, Columbia University also for offers financial aid. Um, so you will uh, receive additional funding and uh, this, this will help you to cover uh, other parts of your uh, cost of study as well. Exactly. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and the funding that Columbia offers is based on financial need, kind of family financial need, your own financial need. And so that's where that CSS profile comes in and is so important because 
the scholarships that Columbia offers can range very widely from maybe around $6,000 US up to twenty dollars or $30,000 US or sometimes even more than that. Um, so that CSS profile is really the tool that allows our scholarship committee to understand um, what level of need you have and, and allows us to work together to make sure that we can, can help make this an affordable experience for you and your, and your families. Um, so maybe the, the next question here regarding English proficiency and uh, whether the HKDSE is taken into account. Um, that's a great question. I'm really glad that you asked. Um, and for the admissions committee on the Columbia side, and I'll only speak for the Columbia side, we do look at all of your classes um, and all of the, the uh, grades that you've earned as part of your HKDSE. Um, but we also require a, an English proficiency exam that's not part of your school leaving uh, certification. And so we would ask you to submit on top of that either um, a TOEFL or an IELTS score. But if you have specific questions about this, please don't hesitate to, to send us an email. We're happy to kind of get into more details about your own specific situation as well, if that doesn't kind of answer the question fully. Um, maybe the next question, the next, how many students usually get accepted from computing mathematics? It really varies year to year. Some years, it's really dependent on who the best fit for the program is. Um, so some years we've had two or three students, some, some years we've had five or six students. Um, we typically have each year around 20 students from all of the different majors um, starting in the joint bachelor's degree program. We don't have you know, kind of specific quotas um, on the Columbia side for the number of students who we can admit. But at the same time, we are looking for a good balance from among all of the, the eligible majors. We want to make sure that we're creating a class of students who are um, coming from a bunch of different and a number of different academic perspectives and, and really starting the kind of creating the start of a very enriching academic conversation among the different elements of the program. But usually for computing mathematics, and this is true of most of the majors, somewhere between two and five students per year um, are usually admitted to the program. We've got some very good questions. I'm going to um, pop over. And just a reminder, um, if you're looking to ask questions, please definitely ask them in the Q&A function, um, just because it's hard to follow both the chat and the Q&A at the same time. But I am going to go ahead and take a look at the, the two questions that are in the, the chat function very quickly. Um, so a question about the application. I'm transferring to the computing mathematics major, but it, um, the student is interested in it says that they can finish the required courses in their two years in their year two year two of study. Sorry, Ooh, it's getting late on my side. Um, <laughs> am I eligible to apply for this program? Um, Heather, maybe I'll ask your your uh, perspective on that. So uh, actually, we well when, when we um, when we uh, if you look at the website, you can see that our students actually have to be under one of the twelve uh, approved majors, and it's highly recommended that students uh, choose one of the majors from the very beginning of their studies. Uh, so if that's because um, they all the students will actually have to complete a two, uh, their two year study plan at CityU in a very um, um, structured way. Uh, so we don't normally recommend students to transfer from major to major because uh, it's very likely that they cannot follow through the study plan. And uh, if you are really able to complete your study plan, I think you should you still check with your respective college um, and also academic department to see whether you can still meet the eligibility requirements. Uh, maybe I can comment on that because uh, you're transferring to computing mathematics. So we get these uh, questions from time to time, actually, because we do have a lot of transfer students into um, computing mathematics. And usually our advice is that it's very difficult because uh, as Heather said, uh, there's a very structured and uh, the course plan is quite tight um, for students to complete certain uh, major course electives, college requirements within the first two years. So if you transfer in, um, uh, in your year two, then uh, I would assume like in your year two, in your first year, you're completing courses from another college. So um, it's very difficult to, um, you know, make up all those requirements within that remaining year. So usually it's very hard. So, um, but if you think you can really, you know, uh, pack those courses into one year, I don't know if that's possible, but if you can plan out this somehow to be possible, then I guess, um, 
right now you should uh, quickly talk with uh, Dr. Dai Dan, which is the major leader of computing math mathematics, and let him look at your course plan, what you have done in your year one, and what you're planning to take in your year two, and see if you can catch up on the course plan that you know normal um, math major students are doing, and see if you can uh, complete all those before, I don't know, you go to Columbia. So yeah, talk to uh, Dr. Dai, and then if he uh, suggests that you can still go ahead to apply, then we are happy to receive your application and see how we can, uh, you know, follow through. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dennis, for the additional information. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Janice. Um, we have one other question in the chat, and then we'll bounce back over to the Q&A function maybe. Um, so a student who is majoring in computational finance, I'm wondering if the corresponding major can be chosen. I believe what you mean is on the Columbia side, um, because you noticed that the corresponding major at Columbia is computer science. You did not make a mistake at all. Um, you actually read that absolutely correctly. The For computational finance students, the major that you, you are mapped into on the Columbia side is in fact computer science, but it's computer science in what we call the combination track. And and the combination track um, means that you would be also taking economics classes, typically, um, for students in order to complete all of the major requirements for computational finance. So we don't have a computational finance um, major within the School of General Studies uh, that, that's available, but the way that we've kind of created an option for I would say a computational finance-ish major on the for the joint bachelor's degree program here at GS is uh, is by allowing students to major in um, computer science with that combination track that allows them to uh, to be part of kind of something that that comes close to what that major is on the on the CityU side. If that if I'm explaining that well, I feel like I'm getting myself. I see you nodding along, Sage. So I don't know if you have something that you wanna that you wanna um, join in as well. Sure, sure, because I am a computational finance major student at uh, CDU, and I'm currently major in computer science mathematics at Columbia, and I also minor in economics. So I, I would say that typically students are allowed to choose from various of computer science related majors, such as computer science combined computer science, and I also petition to choose the computer science mathematics which allows me like a flexible credits of around 16 to 20 credits so that I also minor in economics to fulfill some of the courses of computational finance at CDU. So one of my recommendation is you can actually consider computer science, mathematics and minor in economics. Since um, commu computational finance CDU is just a combination of like various of computer science, finance and mathematic courses. Yeah, so that's basically my experience. Thank you, Sage. Um, Joey, I know that you also come from the uh, com computational finance major. Do you have anything to supplement? Yeah, so for the track thing, uh, even if you want to uh, stick with the um, computer science major, there are various tracks in Columbia that offer to you to choose from. For example, I'm from the, the track of intelligent systems that's more focused on uh, artificial intelligence, natural language processing, and so on, because I combine my interests of linguistics to the field of CS, and that's NLP, natural language process, which falls into the track of um, intelligence systems. So feel free to ask your academic advisor here and uh, understand your own interests to find your best way. That's my suggestion. Absolutely, yeah, thank you both thank so you. much. Um, Heather, if it worked for you, maybe I'll, I'll go back over to the, yeah. the Q&A. Um, so the next question that I'm seeing is asking, what qualities are CityU and Columbia interviewers looking for in the application interview? What advice would you give to prepare for this interview? Um, oh, that's such a good question. We could probably spend the rest of the session just <laughs> talking about that. Um, I, I won't, um, but it's a great question and I'm really glad you asked. I think um, I'll answer from the Columbia side just very quickly and um, then hand it over to, to Heather, to you if, if you'd like, and maybe to, to our students as well and our college coordinators. Um, Really what, what I'm looking for and what my colleagues at Columbia are looking for in the Columbia interview is really a sense of, um, you don't have to have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan mapped out. We don't expect that of you. You're, you're an undergraduate student. Um, but what we wanna know is, uh, what is your, what kind of curiosities do you have? What does this program address? Um, what kind of academic uh, 
excitements do you have? What kind of personal drive do you have to study in a program like this? And what can you get out of being part of the joint bachelor's degree program that you wouldn't be able to get just by being a single degree student at City U. Um, the, the curriculum at City U is excellent and just doing a full four year degree program in one with one bachelor's degree from City U sets you on an amazing trajectory and, and already sets you up for great success. So what we're looking for in, a, in the Columbia interview is what is the what is the added value there? What is the what is the additional something that you have identified about the joint bachelor's degree program that makes it such a compelling experience? So I'm just wondering if any of um, our current student students here would like to share their experience or share some tips. I think I can start with some words. To be honest, I would say, yeah, I think Jessica told, like, just told about a great, really great point. It's like you can't have a really great, you know, like study life and also career at CDU. I know some of my friends, they went to like big banks, like the big firms, but why do you want to come to New York? Like, so my reason for joining this program is like, I really want to challenge myself. Like after spending like one and a half year, you know, at that time at CDU, I mean, it's a pretty good environment. I really learned a lot. Like it's be already become my another comfort zone. And at that time point, I'm thinking about maybe I should change myself. I really want to go to another environment, you know, to challenge myself and also meet, you know, people from all over the world. I think at Columbia, at least from what I learned, we have like students, international students from all over like 60 or 80 different countries. So which was pretty a lot, like you are going to, you know, meet with those people, like collaborate with them. And, you know, just trying to make friends with people from different cultural backgrounds. And I would say diversity is definitely one of the things like, that why I want to choose Columbia and also want to challenge myself, trying to also prepare for my future like career paths or some of the other like future plans as well. So I would say like people have different thoughts about why they come to Columbia, but definitely you should have your own reason for why joining this program instead of like staying at CTU. I mean, like there's not like preference for each, like either choice, but it's just your own like decision to do it. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. Thank you so much, Frank. Uh, so Jessica, for the next question, I think I will be in a better position to advise. Uh, yes, so I'm planning, <laughs> yeah, I'm planning to apply for Hong Kong permanent residence. Uh, and I think one of the requirements is, is uh, staying at, in Hong Kong for seven years and how this uh, dual degree, uh, degree program would actually affect uh, the student's uh, uh, eligibility to apply. So actually, while you're studying at uh, Columbia University um, for the two years, you will still have a valid Hong Kong visa. And that's why uh, actually, uh, for the Hong Kong side, we will still um, consider you as a Hong Kong student. So this will still count as part of your seven years and this will not uh, actually affect your eligibility to uh, apply for um, permanent residence after seven years. Yeah, sorry, can I also have a word on this? Yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, given the situ current situation is like Joey and I, we extend for one more year. So if you want to extend your study at Columbia, that means you may face the risk of giving up your that four years like I talked with actually some of the geos like guys they're telling me you know to reapply for the visa that means you are counting from year one so that is also another factor if you want to really apply for a PR in Hong Kong and you want to work there want to live there definitely there are some risk you may have to think about because I know a lot of my folks they are not like I'm not saying that they're not like academic stuff it's more like we want to have some own plan so that means we want to extend for maybe for half year or you like one more year, like me and Joey just want to, you know, to get more stuff from Columbia and also trying to enjoy our campus life. So that might be a risk when you are considered about applying to the PR for Hong Kong at the same time. Yeah. Thank you both for that. That's really helpful. Um, Nicholas had another question about um, studying in the economic finance major. Um, currently with an undeclared major in planning to take finance. Uh, will I be eligible no matter if I take finance or business economics, or do I understand in the slide only business economics is eligible? I believe that that is correct. Is that right, Heather? Am I understanding that, uh, that question correctly? Yes, I think so. Yeah, because uh, right now, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can't. 
answer this question because it's related to uh, the business students. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, only by, uh, business economic is the eligible major for applying this joint degree program. So if you plan to this uh, uh, joint degree, you have to choose business economics as your major. Mm -hmm. I can't have a word, sorry for taking too much time, but yeah, because I'm currently also facing that decision when I apply for this program, I really like finance, I want to go into finance industry, like, but I still decide to choose business economics, so if you want to consider about like a future career, no matter in Hong Kong or in New York, definitely what you major in are not the things that you are considering, you are still majoring in business related major, so that's enough, so I mean like, here at Columbia, like I used to major in financial economic, which is one of the major here at Columbia, which is most similar to finance, although it's not pure finance, but you still gonna got to take some finance course like corporate finance, like financial econ, which is equivalent to the EF3320 and EF4313 at CityU. So, I mean, definitely like, uh, if you really want to go for this program, like as the EF major, definitely like that is not something you're gonna like be confused about definitely just go for it i mean like yeah i mean definitely like when i finally make my decision it's because i mean like no matter for business econ major or finance major you still can go for the finance industry or go for consulting industry actually like the trend is kind of changing like these days compared with old days when only people in finance they can go to financial industry so that is you need do not need to worry about the major stuff if you want to apply for this program And adding up to Frank's answer, I also would like to share some of my personal experience because I previously majored in computational finance at CDU, and now I major in computer science and mathematics here, but I also land a job at the investment bank. So it's fine. It doesn't matter if you're studying economics or finance. At Columbia, you have many opportunities to explore your future career. Thank you both so much. Thank you both. Yeah. Um, and there's a student who is asking, uh, if I'm admitted to the four-year degree program in CDU from an associate degree, am I eligible for the joint degree program? Um, Heather, maybe I'll let you uh, respond to that. Well, uh, actually, we don't have any restrictions um, to not to not to allow students coming from an associate degree to apply to this program. But uh, as you know, uh, this is our actually a two-step application process. Uh, students will have to first be uh, be actually uh, nominated by their respective college. Uh, so I think um, if they uh, apply to this program, uh, first of all, they, I, I would suggest that they check with their uh, academic department at CDU to see whether they, they can apply. Uh, because you, um, as Jessica has mentioned in the PowerPoint slide, uh, we also have the minimum GPA requirement of 3.3. And for certain majors, uh, the GPA requirement at CDU uh, for the respective academic pro program may be slightly higher. So um, we don't have any restrictions. So as long as you can fulfill um, uh, the city requirement here, uh, you can apply this, this program. Yes, and I have one more point to supplement. Uh, that is, uh, there is a credit transfer requirements uh, in CTU, SCTU. That is the maximum credits uh, available uh, for transferal is 60 credit points. So like students from associate degree, they may apply for credit transfer of their own courses when they take the uh, bachelor degree at CTU. So that is, uh, but uh, the, our the double degree, uh, this joint degree program already, they have to transfer 60 credits to, uh, towards Columbia U already. Mm. So that means those students who took, uh, who were from uh, associate degree or other programs, they can't do any credit transfer of their own courses yeah. at, in CTU. Yeah. But be, because they have to reserve the credits uh, quota for the Columbia U studies. Okay, thank you, Ada. Thank you so much, Ada. Thank you, Heather. And and I'll also just mention that we have had students successfully apply from associate who had come from to CDU from associate degree programs previously. So it's not something that we've never seen before. It's definitely something that on the Columbia side we are we are comfortable with. Absolutely, just as long as you keep all of those other factors in mind as well. Um, so yeah. Um, the next question is regarding the th minimum 3.3 GPA generally. Um, is that per credits or the cumulative GPA at the end of year one and two? I believe it's the CGPA at the end of year one, if I'm remembering correctly. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. at the end of year one. 
great, yes. Um, so hopefully that answers your question that, that minimum 3.3 GPA, it's actually the cumulative GPA at the end of year one in order to be eligible to apply. But I'll put an asterisk there because check with your, your college coordinator, just make sure that it's not a, a higher minimum GPA based on your own individual uh, college or the major that you're in. Um, Next question is, should we provide IELTS or TOEFL for the first round of application? Is that something that's required for the CityU first round application? Well, uh, I would say that normally uh, for students who apply to the joint program, usually they already have a IELTS mm -hmm. or TOEFL score by the time they submit their ap application internally mm -hmm. at CityU. But uh, I have also come across some cases where students actually don't already have a score. Mm -hmm. uh, that's absolutely, absolutely fine, but uh, they have to bear in mind that when they submit their application to Columbia University as the second step, they will need to have the score ready by then. Absolutely. And one thing that I'll that I'll mention, this is a question that we get every single year. If you submitted an IELTS or TOEFL score as part of your application to CityU in advance of your first year at CityU, and it has just recently gone over the two year mark, that's okay. Um, so if that's something that we're comfortable with. If you have a, a score that is very slightly outdated, and I'm, I'm talking about, you know, by a couple of months, not by another two years or something like that. Um, but if you have a, a TOEFL or an IELTS score that's just over two years old, go ahead and send that to us because you'll still be part of, well, you'll still be um, asked to take the uh, American language uh, program essay exam, the ALP essay exam as part of the application process. Um, so, Slightly, slightly over two year old um, exam scores are totally fine. We won't ask you to take a whole new IELTS or TOEFL as part of the, uh, the application process. So I think that would also answer the questions in the chat box uh, by Pei Yuan Luo. I think so. I think we, we yeah. got both of them at the same time. Perfect. Yeah, great. Um, okay, so um, a question about College of Business, um, if I can't finish all of the required courses by the end of my second year, can I still apply to the program this year? I guess this student is a, is a second year student. Um, Heather, I think that that's a question that we were discussing earlier this week. Do you wanna maybe speak to that a little bit? Well, uh, actually um, it's highly recommended that students complete all the required courses at CityU by the end of the uh, second year. Uh, but if there are any special reasons, special circumstances where the students actually have to apply for um, an extension at CTU, we may, we may consider uh, the requests case by case. But we do understand that, you know, uh, in this um, modern world, uh, students actually have maybe other commitments, maybe they want to do an internship, or they want to um, look, they would like to take a look after a family member. So uh, I think um, Columbia University actually will exercise some flexibility when it comes to that kind of circumstances. Absolutely. I think one of the one of the things that's really great about the joint bachelor's degree program living under the School of General Studies, where we cater to non-traditional students and students coming from a non-traditional experience, is that we are we are very comfortable um, with many different versions of students taking their own way to their academic path. Um, and within the, the structure of the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, there, there is a structure around that. There are certain things that we ask you to fulfill and certain kind of frameworks that work best because we've been doing this for for a decade and we've learned through trial and error about you know kind of the things that really do work for students and, and don't work for students in the program um, but we do try to be as flexible as possible because we know that sometimes a, a global pandemic happens or sometimes life happens um, around you and you have to shift and you have to be flexible and, and to be adaptable and um, a program like this actually asks you to learn how to disrupt your studies intentionally. Um, and so we know that sometimes unintentional disruptions happen as well. Um, we have a, two questions maybe that I'll try to answer at the same time. Um, the first is, are grades the only factor you consider? Would you like students with excellent extracurricular activities? And do my grades in secondary school count? So those are great questions kind of back to back with one another. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about briefly how we look at an application um, on the Columbia side. When we are reading applications for any program within the School of General Studies, um, this actually goes to what I was just saying a moment ago, we're looking for really interesting people who are ready to succeed academically in a very rigorous environment. So grades do matter, grades matter a lot. We wanna make sure that you are set up for success um, because as 
Sophia and Sage and Joey and Frank and Andrew will tell you Columbia is challenging. Um, it really it is a really challenging place and, and you're working hard and we ask a lot of students. Um, and we know based on the academic excellence that you've achieved in years one and two at City U, we know that you're ready to meet that challenge. We know that you're ready to, to really meet that head on. So that's why grades are important to us. It's not just for the prestige of it. It's not just for us to be able to say, oh, the students admitted to the program have the highest GPAs because they have to have the highest GPAs. No, we wanna make sure that you, are, that you are ready for a very challenging academic environment. But beyond that, what I like to, to say to students is I'm not looking for grade robots. I really want interest in people who are excited about this experience, who are ready to engage as I was just saying a moment ago, who are ready to really kind of intentionally disrupt what their normal is and to redefine what normal is for themselves, to redefine what success is in an academic environment. You've learned how to be successful at City U, City U in years one and two, and that will take you a really long way towards being successful at Columbia. But it actually does require you to redefine what it means to be successful um, because it is a different culture, it is a different university. And even if a lot of the things are very much the same, it's, it's a totally different place. And so, um, yes, grades are important. And yes, we do look at secondary school grades. We look at most recent grades first. So we're definitely looking more closely at your city U grades than your secondary school grades, but we, we look at them. Um, we wanna make sure that you've been on an academic trajectory that really does set you up for success from the moment you set foot on the Columbia campus. I see some nods here, so I don't know if anyone wants to jump in. Otherwise, we can kind of keep going for sure. <laughs> um, I, I guess I can speak a little bit. Yeah, yeah I, I think that, yeah, sure. um, or I mean, in my experience, and because I was also listening to my upperclassmen that year, when I was applying, I'll say that grades are kind of important, yet to an extent it was, so for example, they said the minimum was 3.3 .3 for uh, psychology. It's like usually expected you have, yeah, definitely at least like a 3.6, maybe like 3.6 uh, to perhaps 3.7. But beyond that, it's like, you don't, um, I think that they're not like, looking for people who are like um like all 4.0s it's like if if they have to choose between like someone with like 4.0s or someone with like 3.7 but you know with also with like some uh you know specific like experience with like research or you know club activities or volunteering who basically have like more of a vision of like what they are interested in, what their goals will be, and how like this program will provide for them, then I'll say it's general that like they're more looking for, yeah, they're more looking for like you have to reach like a certain amount of grades, but beyond that, it's more like what you, yeah, it's like how you're presenting yourself, what you want to get out of this program that I think they will uh, kind of care about. Yeah, I think I can also have a word on this. So like, I know some of my folks like who also joined this program, they have really high GPA. Like definitely as uh, Jessica mentioned, like GPA is something that like guarantee that you can get adapted to the high like peer pressure here in Columbia University. If you ask some of my folks like Joey, like he actually has a video about talking about how to deal with peer pressure at Columbia. But that is not something that really defines yourself as a candidate compared with others. Like it is what your past experience, not only about your GPA, but also like, for example, like Joey and I used to join like the choir. We serve as a choir president. Uh, I know like Sage and I, we are in the same like Mandarin debating team. And also I, I believe some of my folks, they are coming from from the badminton team, they're coming from like, uh, you know, some of the writing team. I mean, a lot of like different student club. And that is what makes them interesting people and also what makes them different compared with other candidates. And also like after Columbia, we also get involved in some different like student clubs, you know, to join, to make friends and quickly get adapted to the new environment. And it's actually, it's a pretty, you know, like, like a uh, pretty like different culture from what you have like learned in Hong Kong. So definitely, I would say I pretty agree on Sophia's point on it. Yeah. 
That's great. Thank you both so much. Um, Joey, I see you wanted to jump in as well. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Sage, I, I will give you more time, okay? Thank you. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, I totally agree with Sophia and Frank. And I want to address more on the um, pressure thing uh, that I also, I've also, I also saw their questions in the Q&A session about uh, what is the hardest thing our us uh, senior students would think of when we are in Colombia. So usually there will be pressures coming from either peers or academic performances. And uh, we, uh, I've actually invited one of my other fellows, friends, also from the same program, Jin Feng Tu, and I did an interview with him. And the video is included on our website. So if you wouldn't mind if I quickly share the screen here. So this one here called, How Can I Deal With Pressure at Columbia? And Jin Feng Tu actually uh, summarize several points. Uh, for example, uh, try to realize um, what what what's the unique point of yourself, and uh, how can you uh, talk with maybe um, consultants about these issues when you feel troubled. And there, yeah, there are everything. Uh, everyone likes to help you, and you don't have to feel pressured if you don't have a very perfect high GPA because that's not the only thing that defines you no matter in city you or at Columbia. So I would suggest visit this video and he did a pretty good summary. Yes, I'll stop sharing now. Sage, go back to you. Thanks for sharing, Joey, Sophie, and Frank. Absolutely agree on that. And I would say that for engineering and business background students, they might need a GPA of around 3.7 or 8 to get some sort of minimum requirement to be accepted. But I would say that GPA and extracurricular activities are kind of like half and half. And Columbia, you at Columbia, they definitely want to see the more like human aspect of you, what you are trying to focus, what is your commitment outside of your academic performance. And I can share one of my past experience at the Mandarin debate team at CDU. And after two years at CDU, debating the Mandarin debate team, I finally found that I can actually start a Mandarin debate team at Columbia. That is one of my extracurricular activity at Columbia that I'm currently focusing on. And I just, we just like officially registered this master. And I would say that, yes, please do take a lot of extracurricular activity. Everything can, internship, research, volunteer, everything counts, yeah. Go ahead, Thank Heather, you so sorry. much, everyone. Yeah. Um, so uh, for the next question, uh, I'm. I'm so sorry. My cat wanted to participate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. But um, do you want to go ahead first, Jessica? Jessica? Sure, absolutely. I apologize. It's it's getting towards dinner time for my cat, and she's getting very oh, vocal. Okay. So I will try to keep her appeased and off camera. <laughs> um, so. Excuse me, miss. Um, so we have a question uh, from someone who is majoring in financial technology. Um, does, does computational finance major stand a higher chance considering the degree in Columbia is computer science? Um, I've, I haven't heard of anyone majoring in financial technology that, got, that has gotten into the program. Um, honestly, I think that's really because uh, as of last year or the year before, computational finance and financial technology was a brand new major being um, offered as part of the program and as, as a new track to the program. Um, so I think it's more uh, a matter of the, really just we haven't seen that many applications from the financial technology um, uh, stream so um, or from, from, from the financial technology major. Um, She's getting very, very chatty, I apologize. Um, so um, it's not necessarily that we've seen bad applications from, from that stream or from that major, but more that, um, more that we just haven't seen that many applications. Exactly, yeah. So we, it's actually a newly added major for the 2021 intake. And that's why, um, yeah, we haven't seen a, a lot of applications yet because it's relatively new. Exactly. Um, I see a couple of questions here about CS students applying for the program in their third year. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of, excuse me, so sorry. Ah, um, so there are, um, and one actually from a CS student who is in year one. So I'll kind of just click all of these off to answer all at the same time. Um, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but CS students should um, plan to apply in year two. So not in year one, not in year three. What we'd like to see is that CS students apply in year two so that as you're going into your internship and into your placement in year three, you already know what comes after that and you're planning ahead, um, potentially to fulfill some core curriculum requirements on the Columbia side during year three. So you can kind of do a little bit more work in advance of your time at Columbia. Um, but year two for CS students, even with the third year placement is when you should be planning to apply to the joint degree program. And also uh, for uh, CS students who apply in their second year, actually they will um, uh, they will have to defer because at, at the City University of Hong Kong, they actually have to do a one year internship and take several courses as well. So uh, usually what we would do, um, uh, GO would uh, actually collaborate with your colleges, uh, colleges and also uh, ARRO at the Academic uh, Records and Regulations Office here on the CTU side to defer your studies. Exactly. And that's something that we do automatically on the Columbia side as well, because we know that CS students who are offered admission to the program will do that automatic one year deferral. And that's something that we do just automatically as part of your, your admission if you accept the offer. Um, okay, we've got a lot, uh, quite a number actually of CS students who are asking questions. I appreciate you CS students being so interactive. This is great. Um, there are a couple of very specific questions about GPA for CS students. So can I maybe... Um, ask my, my colleagues um, on the CDU side to, to speak to that a little bit. Um, Finzi and Dr. Lern. Um, yeah, so basically uh, first for the CGPA, you have to have uh, the minimum CGPA to uh, get invited for application. But then afterwards, right? So you need to be uh, considered for the department shortlisting. And then in which case I'll give you an interview, right? So, so during the interview, actually it's more important for you to demonstrate your knowledge about this program. What are the unique selling points, right? From the Columbia U side and the CTU side. And you need to be able to tell me, right? So how good you are, well, or how, why you are a good fit, right? So, and how does it fit not just for the time you're studying there, but also in your long-term career plan? Why does it a good fit, right? So you need to be well prepared. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Lung. Thank you. Um, so maybe a couple of other questions, and this is perfect. I think we're kind of starting to wind down and I know we're uh, even a little bit over time. I want to make sure we're respectful of everyone's time, especially um, all of our students who have been so generous with their time tonight. Thank you again, everyone, for, for taking time out of your Friday night. Um, so a major core course copy, computational linguistics in CityU in the LLA program isn't provided by Columbia University, but it could not be taken in the first and second year at City U. Um, would there be any special arrangement regarding the computational linguistics class? Um, I'm not looking at the major map directly, but I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Grace, absolutely. Yeah, so let me say a few words. Yeah, we noticed, uh, and we understand your concern. Uh, we noticed this structural issue, actually, when we are doing the mapping, the curriculum. Uh, but please don't worry. Uh, please be advised to contact your major leader. Uh, Dr. Cecil Lun, uh, the department will make arrangement for you to take that course before you, uh, uh, I mean, basically uh, within year two. So please contact your major leader uh, for advice. Great, thank you so much. Um, so, oh, go so ahead, the next Heather. question, yeah. yeah, I think it's actually very similar to uh, a previous question about uh, Transfer, uh, transfer students eligibility. So I, I guess we will not repeat again. Perfect. Um, and I also see uh, a question here about computer science and minoring in business economics. If admitted to the joint bachelor's degree program, can I continue to pursue my minor at Columbia? The short answer is yes. Um, the longer answer is a little bit more complicated than that. Um, the joint bachelor's degree program really does require a lot of work from you um, as part of the program, especially in computer science, it's a big major. Um, and even though you're pulling in a lot of classes that you've already taken at CityU, in order to fulfill major requirements, it's still a big major at Columbia. Um, so what we typically recommend for students um, in the joint bachelor's degree program, and this is true of all of our international dual degree programs, we typically advise students not to plan to do a minor, but instead uh, to really, in fact, maybe within the economics department at Columbia, 
just take classes that you're interested in, um, especially if you already have that minor at CityU and you've already had a foundation of, of coursework at CityU in economics. If there are specific classes that you're interested in and that you really want to kind of get more enrichment in, in economics on the Columbia side, without require without declaring that minor, uh, the act of declaring the minor would then actually require you to fulfill a specific structure in economics, in addition to your major in computer science, but not declaring a minor and just taking elective classes um, on the Columbia side gives you a little bit more flexibility and actually gives you freedom to take classes that you're really interested in without having to fulfill two different very structured um, academic programs at the same time, if that makes sense. It's a little bit abstract to, to kind of uh, describe. Um, uh, I see we have a question about the ALP essay exam, what it's like, what is the exam, the components, et cetera. Um, I'm definitely happy to answer this question and then maybe um, open it up to our students to, to talk about their experiences with the, the ALP essay exam. Um, so the ALP essay exam, it's pretty straightforward, especially if you've been doing, you know, kind of studies in English for, for the last couple of years. Um, it is a 90 minute exam where you are given a prompt um, to talk about, usually from, from kind of current events or current news, though sometimes it kind of goes in a lot of different directions. Um, and then you're just asked to respond to the prompt in writing over the course of the, those 90 minutes. Um, there is not a kind of prep booklet or the way there is for the TOEFL or for the IELTS, but it really is about how much reading and writing are you doing? How much thinking are you doing in English? And that's really what the ALPSA exam is designed to assess. But um, I actually can't speak with as much authority as any of our students because I've never taken the exam. So I will, I will turn it over to our students to, to be the experts here. I think I can start with some words and I will move my time to my other folks given that they have more experience in ALP. So like, I'm not a good writer in English to be honest. So like, I don't do many much preparation like at first, but given that like, I know a lot of students at CDU, we, we used to took like the university English. So think about it's like you need to write an English, university English essay, but in 90 minutes at ALP exam. It's more like, you know, you have like an issue and they provide you with some reading materials. You try to get what they're meaning and try to come up with your own thoughts. That is kind of like the summary of the ALP exam is purpose. And, and, they, and the ALP professionals, after they receive our assets, they are going to like put you in different grades, like seven, eight, nine, or 10. So if you go to 10, it's like you are going direct, after joining Columbia, you will be directly placed into what we call the university writing class. It's similar to the UE course at CDU. And if you are placed to nine or eight, definitely you need to take more extra English course that will help you, you know, to gain more skills in English writing. And I would say that those courses are also helpful and like, if you do not get a good score, like for myself, actually, after taking ALP, I was placed to ALP 8 at first. You still have another chance after joining Columbia before the orientation. You can take another ALP exam. And like if you get a better grade, you will be placed to a different class. So myself, like after taking a second time, I was placed to 10 and I will just directly be placed to university writing class. But some of my codes, they are, for example, they go from 8 to 9 where just do at A, but they can take additional course in order to, you know, to sharpen their English writing skills. Yeah. Yeah. Can I? Oh, can I continue this question? Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, of course. So I will quickly refer to, uh, if you wouldn't mind, it's traditional Chinese, but I'll quickly refer to the encyclopedia we compiled. It has a chapter in the uh, CDU volume that talking about the ALP, ALP exams. Uh, there's the purpose of the test. Uh, usually there are students, uh, the students around us we've been heard of uh, around level seven to level eight, level nine and directly level 10. And that means you will be directly put into university writing here. And um, there's also some suggestions that we consider useful when preparing for the um, ALP test. It's just a time exam with a prompt so um, just try to treat it as a, an academic writing exam. And uh, there's also the, the, the graph here because I myself is from uh, level eight, specifically 8A at the very beginning. I didn't uh, choose to take the second exam. So I follow the path eight, nine, and finally 10, that's university writing. And um, I would say if 
if students are concerned about whether this this result will affect their applications, I would say not that much uh, because that's just uh, academic writing exam. And uh, it will be really useful if you do well by taking those courses because you will write fluently and well in your future studies. And also there is some comments from my fellow students about what, how, can you, how you can prepare for the exam and how you can deal with the academic writing things and also those um, recommendations things. And also here is the uh, official website of ALP. So uh, feel free to, uh, if you're comfortable with Chinese, feel free to go to the website and access our encyclopedia. That's CDU volume uh, chapter eight. Can I interject as well? Um, shameless plug-in. Um, I was an English debater at CDU. Um, I think it has been immensely helpful um, in preparing me to actually converse in English and to come up with ideas in English as well. Um, granted, I didn't take the ALP because I was educated in English back in uh, where I came from. Um, with all that said, I think it is very helpful in another manner in that when I came here, it was very helpful in helping me just speak English with people, right? Because it can be quite intimidating when you're speaking with um, English as a first language speaker, if you're not used to it. So being trained in that manner, being used to it, being able to, you know, just not have jitters when you're talking with people who are so fluent and, you know, sound like they come up, uh, come up from an English drama is actually a very useful skill. So yeah, definitely check out the English debate team back at CDU if you're there. Thank you all so much. That is all really great advice. Um, and I see a couple of very quick email, quick, quick emails, goodness, quick questions rather. Um, and maybe I'll save the one at the top for last because that's a great, um, a great question to end on. Um, but can I ask about minimum GPA for mathematics students in the last several years? I think I, I'm looking at the, the different CGPAs that we've seen in the last few years, specifically for computing, computing mathematics students. I think it's been somewhere around 3.7 or 3.8 in the last few years for um, computing mathematics for students who have been uh, offered admission to the joint bachelor's degree program. Um, that's So that's just generally the trend that we've seen in the last uh, two or three years. Um, and here's a great question about having a minor in City U in year two. Um, and the student is wondering if they should complete all of the courses for their minor before they start their time at Columbia in year three. Um, I'm not sure what the minor is, so I'm not sure kind of where to where to go with that. But Heather, maybe I'll I'll ask your advice on this. Well, actually, um, we don't have any um, very strict requirements. I think it would depend on your study plan and also, uh, you know, um, for for how long you would actually want to study. Because uh, we have actually seen cases where students um, study for not just four years, but five years in total in order to complete some minor requirements, or maybe they also take some time off to, to do an internship. So I think after all, it would really depend on your uh, on your study plan. And uh, you should also check with your uh, respect, uh, respective uh, academic unit to see uh, whether they have any advice, whether they have any recommendations. And again, I cannot give you a very specific information because we are not uh, very sure which major minor you're talking about. Exactly. Um, great. And then one other question about um, from a student athlete and who wants to know if there are any programs that would um, allow from, for some special arrangements for her. Um, I'm not totally sure um, what you mean in terms of special arrangements, um, but in terms of the application process, we really are mainly looking at your academic performance as, as we've kind of discussed before. Though, of course, if you are a student athlete at a very high level, we'll, we'll definitely take that into account. That's something we're really interested in. And of course, if there are ways that we can help support um, your student athletic career once you're here at Columbia, um, absolutely, please feel free to, to, to let us know. And I think we may have already been in touch via email about that. So if you have additional questions, please don't hesitate to kind of follow up um, via email on that. I'm happy to, to have a couple more, um, some more conversation about that. Um, someone is asking whether the interviews are going to be held um, online uh, next year, um, early next year on the Columbia side. We 
We hope not. We'd really like to be able to do them in person. Um, typically, we are able to, typically in a normal year, whatever normal means anymore, typically and, we... And um, normally we do this info session face-to-face -face on the campus yes. of CityU as well. I, yeah, exactly. I would much rather be at CityU in person right now doing this, uh, doing this information session for you all, um, you know, kind of face-to-face. -face. So normally we try and actually do these interviews in person. Um, over the course of a few days um, at CityU. Uh, we are, of course, very prepared and very, very comfortable at this point doing interviews online, um, doing them via Zoom. We accommodate the time difference, obviously, between New York and Hong Kong or wherever you might be in the world um, at that moment. Um, so the hope is to do them in person, but we are very easily able to do them online as well. And um, you know, we'll, we'll have more information about that probably after the start of the new year. Um, there is another question about um, if a student is admitted to Columbia, is it free to choose the different majors that we offer or is there some limitation for choosing? You do actually have to choose a major that is mapped to your city U major. So there are kind of pre-approved majors on the Columbia side that are um, mapped to and associated with what you're studying at city U in years one and two. And so I would definitely recommend going to the joint bachelor's degree website to kind of see what all of those, um, what all of those majors are on the city U side if you're not yet enrolled at city U um, and then what the associated uh, approved majors are at Columbia. Um, these will probably be the last two questions because I know we're, we're running short on time and we've already run over and thank you all for making time to be part of this. Um, what percentage of students are accepted who apply? Um, oh gosh, over the last couple of years, I feel like it's been somewhere, once you get past the pre-approval process on the city use side, I think it's somewhere around 50%, um, maybe even slightly higher. Um, once you, once students get through to the Columbia side of the, the process, and those are the only applications I see, so I'll, I'll defer to Heather on kind of uh, trends for the pre-approval process as well. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, as I have mentioned earlier, it's actually a two-step application process. So uh, students need to be nominated by their college and schools, uh, first of all, at CDU. Mm -hmm. uh, so once they have gone through the first step, uh, usually I would say um, uh, they, they you know, uh, they will actually go through the ALP exam and they will also uh, conduct an interview with Columbia University. So after they have gone through gone through the first step, step usually the acceptance rate is actually roughly about um, two thirds, I would say. Oh, it's even higher than I than I remember. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, this is great. I think this will be our, our last question. Um, and thank you to the student who's asked this question about really what senior, uh, what life is like at Columbia. How do you compare workloads? How do you balance work and life um, and everything? And maybe this is a great question to end on for, for all of our students. We'll, we'll open the floor to all of you. Do you mind if I start first because my phone is please running Frank, out of battery? Please, absolutely. Oh my yeah. gosh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> so like, I would say the workload here at Coloma is definitely heavier, to be honest, than CTU. Like we have weekly homework, like two midterms and a final for usually for each like mathematic or statistic course, also for each, some of the intermediate level econ course as well. So your peers are pretty uh, like outstanding. Some of them are really hardworking. So I would say definitely there, you have a lot of like, more academic workload compared with CDU, but definitely it is still manageable, I would say. So, and you also have a lot of like, you know, club experience. So it's more like work hard and play harder at Columbia. So I would say that is something I would like to say, but like if you go to the Columbia library, you will have a more in-depth look about like how Columbia students, they are really hardworking. Yeah. That's really Absolutely. true. I feel so related to um, Frank when talking about the Columbia library hours. <laughs> I usually for this semester, I stayed up until two, three, or even 4 a.m. in Butler Library <laughs> finishing the assignments. Um, but I feel that's Columbia. <laughs> I feel like my input would be a bit different. I've been sleeping like eight hours every day. Um, what I want to say is that workload, it's certainly um, greater, like, uh, it depends, like, sometimes there are, like, for humanity courses, you got more readings, um, for others, you may have, like, weekly homework and stuff, so uh, most of the time, there 
you are expected to spend more time in it, especially because it's like one one credit was around like three hours of work, right? So that was kind of like uh, an expectation. But I'll say that you don't need to be like very afraid of like not catching up because it's not necessarily much harder than the courses you would take in CityU. It's more like if you put, yeah, it's like, the more effort you put into it, the better the grades you get. I think that part of it was like, um, that part of it was something that you don't particularly need to stress a lot. And I have a quick comment that's also a video clip. I've made a video about how to face the peer pressure. How, uh, that, uh, let me quickly check the video. That's what should I do if my Columbia peers are better than me? That's also on the website. And I share my own experience and try to um, you know, calm everyone down. It's not that your, your peers are very competitive then you cannot study further in Columbia. There's still much more for you to explore. There's still much more for you to um, experience and study. So don't feel, don't put too, don't be too harsh on yourselves and uh, try to you know, calm yourself down and uh, enjoy the, the, the process here. And following on Joy's direction, I would say that if you get accepted by Columbia, you will survive. Like you won't say that I, I study like 20 hours a day and cannot like manage to pass a course that won't happen. But definitely the, cor the, the coursework, the workload is heavier at Columbia. As you can see the Butler Library, just behind me is opening 27, uh, 24 hours, seven, seven days a week. And it's like crazy. Like you can, you can always find somebody study there like at three o'clock AM, but I personally won't study up to that late. So it depends on how you manage your coursework. And I would say that I was spending, I was spent about 80% of my time studying at Columbia. Well, at CDU, I spent about 60% of my time and 40% of extracurricular activities, but Definitely, it is manageable. It is not as crazy as you might have thought, but yes, it is heavy. I think I think we did everything. I think we answered all the questions. Um, I think we got yes. everyone. Thank you all so much. Um, and thank you, Andrew, for, for the shout out for my cat. <laughs> <laughs> she is, she's very excited to be part of this, uh, this session tonight. Um, I, I think we have, probably covered as much information as we can for, for one morning or one evening. Um, thank you all so much for being part of this session. Uh, thank you all for attending all of our students in the audience. Um, it was a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you to our college coordinators, to all of my colleagues, to Vinci and Janice and Ada um, and Dr. Lung and Grace and Heather. Thank you for everything. I could not ask for a better group of colleagues to work with. I feel so fortunate to be involved with with the joint bachelor's degree program so um thank you so much for for joining us and i think this is where we'll leave you and of course um please don't hesitate to be in touch if you have any questions about any aspect of the program i will drop uh the email address for the program here in the chat um and we definitely hope you reach out for anything you may need to know about the the joint bachelor's degree program um as it as it is. So to all of our students, oh, I've got cat number two now who is who is wanting to say hello. I'm going to sign off before everyone gets rowdy over here. Thank you so much and have a yeah. great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much, especially <laughs> of, um, as a big thanks to our current students who are spending their Friday night to be with us. Considering how heavy their workload is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.